Welcome to the Phase World Podcast. Engaging conversations that cross the boundaries between business, art, and the digital world. Hi guys, welcome back to the Face World Podcast. This is your host, Fei Wu. You probably noticed that Face World Podcast went offline for a few weeks, and that is because I was traveling and vacationing in China, and it was a wonderful time. I'm also thinking that I might turn some of those stories into mini episodes, and、uh, if you're interested in listening to that, so definitely continue to follow Face World. But back to today's topic. I am now recording a subject. I must say that I've never exposed on Face World before, and that is financial versus spiritual independence. So before we dive in, I want to clarify that spiritual here does not refer to religion; rather, we're talking about the human spirit. This blog post or this episode is also inspired by my friend Kirsten Deseka. I met her at Arnold Worldwide and found out that she speaks Mandarin and visited China when she was still in school. Since then, she left Arnold and now works at an active lifestyle apparel company called Crane and Lion, based in Boston. Whenever she and I get together, we always find ourselves surrounded by delicious food, and from there, good conversations, ideas naturally flourish. What is it like to be a woman in the 21st century? How do career? Womanhood, motherhood, all fit in together. How and when, when do we learn our own set of personal values? When I was five, my parents took me to an ice cream factory just outside of Beijing. It was a dream come true for a little girl like me. Since I was a baby, I had an obsession towards sweets like ice cream. Some say I still do today. Watching the ice cream taster cut open a pint of ice cream and indulge in the flavor, I knew instantly what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I want to work in an ice cream factory when I grow up. I had never seen my mom looking so disappointed at me. Why would you do that? She showed no sympathy whatsoever. You are going to be a successful career woman, and you can buy yourself as much ice cream as you want any time you want. I never forgot that moment. It was a very strange experience. My mom never talked to me like that before, so I convinced myself that she had the best interest at heart. Therefore, I made my ice cream taster career a plan B. Growing up in Beijing in the 80s and 90s was an interesting time for anyone. The country was going through a tremendous amount of change. I remember seeing high-rise buildings go up one after another. Tens of thousands of construction workers migrated to Beijing overnight. The city looked drastically different year after year. By the mid-90s, I stopped keeping track of places and things. There were simply too many that nearly nothing looked familiar. Not just architecture, but also food and the ways that we interacted with one another. We had a few brands for everything we needed in our lives, but all of a sudden, we had way more choices than we ever had before. I was about 12 or 13, wearing school uniforms every day, just like everybody else. To embrace our individuality, all the teenagers went crazy for foreign shoe brands such as Nike, Adidas, Reebok, Puma, or at the very top. Our feet became our status symbols. As teenagers, we started talking about money on a regular basis, mostly through the products we owned. Because of this speedy yet unprepared shift in our lifestyle and value, I remember thinking and fearing that our beloved city would soon be too expensive to live in one day. And most of our parents, by this I mean nearly all my friends' classmates' parents, worked full time nights and weekends, often hours of commute each way. All of us were the only child, yet it still required both parents to work in order to continue the lifestyle we were accustomed to and aspire to obtain. A family car, a pet, vacation, extravagant education. At that time, an extravagant education meant bilingual schools with travel abroad opportunities and such. 
I had always wanted to study abroad when I was a child. My mom became a celebrity artist in the 80s with her breakthrough collection called Dream of the Red Chamber. It was the first and only collection that features all 440 characters from the renowned novel, a masterpiece from Chinese history. As a result, mom traveled a ton in and outside of China when I was still a child. Her work was sent to Taiwan, Korea, Spain, even the United States for shows. I was inevitably exposed to people and things outside of China, European and American influences being the most memorable of all. My English wasn't outstanding by international school standards, but I did quite well in the regular Chinese school system. I gained much confidence in believing that one day soon, I would be backpacking my way through North America and then attend school as a full-time student there. There's too much money involved. My dad raised his voice for the first time in a long time. Fei will probably go to a decent college in China anyway. Maybe graduate school. We can talk then. That's not what she wants to do. She is ready. My mom replied with confidence. I was proud of her. It was the most difficult decision she had to make. And it was crushing her soul. I was 16. Mom and I were best friends. I had always been there for her. Within hours, my mom and I showed up at Bank of China. My mom wasn't much of an accountant. She still hates managing money, but there she was, supporting me unconditionally and making my dream a reality. Standing in the middle of the bank with hundreds of people passing by, I learned the importance of financial independence as a woman. My grandma and generations of women before her couldn't even imagine such possibility making decisions independently without having to consult or rely on their husbands. The image of me as a five-year-old little girl standing in the ice cream factory reappeared. I thought, maybe mom is right all along. Financial independence is what a woman needs in order to be strong and powerful. A few months later, just after my 17th birthday, I found myself on a Boeing 757 from Beijing to LA a solid 12-hour flight across the Atlantic Ocean. By the time we landed, I would be over 7,000 miles from home. But I was filled with excitement and determination. After all, it took me three tries to earn my U.S. student visa. That is a story for another time. Life is about making choices. David S. Rose once said that immigration is the ultimate entrepreneurship. Immigrants are people who decide to leave a place they're familiar with and transition to the land of the unknown. With $3,000 in my pocket and not knowing exactly when I would be returning home, I needed to adjust my own expectations quickly. After spending $200 to purchase basic items for my dorm room at Freiburg Academy, I put the rest in the savings account. Meanwhile, Japanese students were purchasing high-end cereals for hundreds of dollars. European students invested on fashion, restaurants, and drugs. I was a bit of a social outcast in high school. So instead, I pursued hobbies much outside of my comfort zone. I joined the boys' hockey team, and I was the worst player they had ever seen. But I stuck around. I also learned to play softball and hit a home run once or twice. When my sport wasn't in season, I found myself practicing alto sax in the music hall. This lifestyle was entirely new to me. When in Beijing, my parents would fill my schedule with private lessons, people to meet, in addition to the famously hectic school life in Beijing. I was always so busy, with very little time to think and reflect. At Freiburg, Maine, I had nothing but time. I learned to cultivate a new way of freedom and independence. Without much money and parental supervision, I became more resourceful than ever before. I learned so many things for free, all while speaking a new language, meeting new people, and figuring things out constantly. I also failed plenty in school and in sports, often embarrassed myself in front of my teachers and peers. Not an easy thing to do in high school, but magically, I felt free and weightless. In turn, people recognized me. They remembered me. Some of them even voted me to be the prom queen. I thought it was a practical joke for a few seconds. So I wrote this blog post that I've always wanted to write. 
there's something to be said about spiritual freedom, a moment when you become yourself more fully. I often look back on my experience as a 17-year-old entering into the world of the unknown by myself. Sometimes, I fear that I wouldn't have the capacity to do that again. I find that this fear often increases with age. Somehow, we believe that we need to settle into a routine that appears stable and predictable. Max McEwen argued in his book Adaptability that stability is a dangerous illusion. How do we adapt? Answers to this question is long-winded. Usually, some argue that financial independence needs to come first before anyone could adapt. But perhaps, just perhaps, spiritual independence is even more important. I believe that spiritual independence is the ability to calm the chatter in your head, and understand the difference between "this will never work" versus "this didn't work." It is also the vision and belief that where there is a will, there is a way. Okay, let's not get too melodramatic here, because this is not to say that you will or should feel balanced at all time. That is a very artificial way to approach the mind. To me. Recognizing the importance of spiritual independence and exercising the ability to deal with change is a pretty good starting point. So that concludes the story of the day, Face World mini episode. If you have found a way to cultivate spiritual independence, if this story makes any sense at all, I welcome you to share your stories with me.、Uh, It would be best to be on the blog via the comments. You can also find me on social media. So thanks so much for listening, and I will be back very soon because Phase World has recently interviewed two new guests.、Uh, one at Newton North High School, and the other is a very successful woman who is willing to talk about the balance between women and their careers in the 21st century. We will meet again very soon.